Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com. Yeah, exactly. That's the way government operates. They break your legs and then sell you the wheelchair, wheelchair and claim that they've solved your problem. <laughs> we are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 141st episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a Bipcot No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents there. Especially are. North Korea. You can find out more about this at bipcot.org. So we are back. I mean, geez, that's like what? The worst form of communism is North Korea? <laughs> yeah, you know, you're North Korea, the U.S., it's debatable. Anyway, we're back. <laughs> I'm Jeremy. That's Dave. Just the two of us this week. Andre, unfortunately, had to uh, call out sick at the last moment. Had uh, something he had to deal with with his uh, child, so... That takes precedent, we understand. And you know, we were going to try to keep it short this week anyway. We actually, uh, there's a story that I got from our friend Shane Radliff over at Liberty Under Attack. He actually recently interviewed this guy, and I was hoping to do so myself for, for our show. But unfortunately, because of his circumstances, getting him equipment is kind of difficult. And well, Shane actually was able yeah. to go to this, go physically to see this guy in order to do an interview. So, uh, but before I bury the lead too far, uh, the story is. Uh, and obviously, I'll put everything in the show notes, too. But uh, the story is there's this guy named uh, Kamal uh, Sanders who goes by the name of Chef, Chef Sanders out in Decatur, Illinois. And he's been a fixture in that community for years. He used to run a community center. And then back, uh, I think it was back like 10 years or so ago, somewhere around there, he decided that he wanted to get some, he tried to get the proper permits and stuff to be able to open up uh, different you know, to, to expand what he was doing at the community center because he was trying to take care of yeah. the at-risk youth in the in the area and stuff like that. And he started taking care of... Actually help people, you know? <laughs> yeah, of his own volition, of with his own money. Um, and obviously, you know, people would donate to him and stuff, but it was like he was going out of his way and he actually had his sons... Those people don't exist uh, according to, uh, you know, socialists and various statists out there. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, and so he was he was out there trying to do this and he start he he always liked to cook so he started cooking for these at risk at risk youths and then he also expanded that to the local homeless population so much so that him and his sons would get up every morning at like 4 a.m. to go cook this massive breakfast to bring it down not to the local homeless shelter because in Decatur <laughs> they actually allow the homeless people in the winter to sleep inside the police station and then they kick him out at really? like 7 a.m. So for quite a while, he oh. was do, they, him and his sons were doing this, get you know, getting up early in the morning, cooking this giant breakfast for, for these for these folks, and bringing it down to the police station and feeding them. That way, when they were kicked out in, at seven o'clock in the you know first thing in the morning at seven o'clock into the cold winter air, they at least had some warm food in their stomach. And you yeah, know, he did this for quite a while, and it was in the police station. So obviously, the police were quite aware of him. And who he was, what he was doing, no problems. Then, out mm. of nowhere, 
somebody must have reported him for something. Uh, in situations like this, it usually ends up being some, you know, quote unquote, le- legitimate business owner who's mad that somebody else isn't following all the rules. Like, yeah, that's are. what I was about to say. That's 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 what's happened. Is somebody's profits are getting cut, and they're wondering why. We we think we, I I think so, but there hasn't been any proof of this yet. But basically, what they well, you know, it's like when you have that girlfriend that goes, uh, "It's not you, it's me," but it's really she just got another guy. Yeah. This, is, this is what's happening. So, yeah. Well, like yeah. Some guy was like, hey, this guy's cutting into our, and we're paying property taxes here. We're paying these police salaries. Come on. What the heck? Yeah, but he, yeah, like, that's it, how it happens. Uh, yeah, of course. And of course, you know, not, not that he was, not that he was like avoiding any of that because he was just, he was cooking out of his house. So he was still paying for his own property, you know, for paying rent on his, on his property and stuff like that. But anyway, somebody got a bug up their rear end. Uh, like I said, we don't actually know the story. That does seem like the most likely scenario that somebody ratted him out. But they tried somebody to, need taken behind back and beaten. Well, <laughs> yeah, keep but going. hold on, hold on. Let's get through this. So so anyway, so they slapped him with like a thousand dollar fine for for basically for feeding the homeless without the proper paperwork. Again, even though the police were quite aware for quite a while of what he was doing, because he was doing it in their building. So they went ahead and did this. Now get luckily tax money, man. Now yeah, well, knuckle, luckily he managed to get the fine drop down to one hundred only one hundred dollars plus court costs of course because he has even though like everybody else where he's taxed to pay for the court system he has to pay the court cost that of course never makes huh. sense it's just another way for them to get money you know a, you. a buddy of mine just got his uh, he got a uh, like his they said his uh stop you know the, the lights are gone your tail lights he they said that they were too dark and uh, apparently they were so he got them fixed, went down there, and they were like, all right, fine, it's it's everything. You just owe us $200 for court cost. He went in there and was like, Judge, why do I owe you $200 if I'm not guilty for something? Like, why, what's the deal? Like, how is that legal? And the judge was like, you're right, dismissed. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. We'll see. Unfortunately, most people would just pay it without even thinking. So yeah, occasionally if you do That's ask, what they're counting on. Exactly. But well, so anyway, so if that was the end of this story, it would, it would be, it would be, it would be horrible. You know, it'd be pretty bad, but you know, you got it down, cut down with a hundred bucks and whatever the core costs are, it wouldn't be like a horrible thing. But unfortunately this was not the end of the story. A couple of days after this, he got up early one morning again, and he wasn't going to feed the homeless because he had already been told that he can't feed the homeless anymore because, you know, he's, he, he doesn't have the right paperwork to do that. He was instead getting up to make breakfast to bring to his sister. And on the return trip from his sister's place, he picked up one of his helpers who helped him out during the day with doing all the cooking and stuff that he does. And when they returned to his place, there was a giant van outside and essentially a SWAT team inside raiding his house and taking all the food out of his refrigerator, taking most of his equipment, although for some reason they left the commercial equipment he kept. They took a lot of his personal cooking equipment. And he said un- inexplicably they went around the entire house and unplugged every single plug that was in an outlet somewhere. And just like, and then left him with a piece of paper that basically said, you know, which I have one of these from my situation last year. They hand you a piece of paper to let you know that, oh yeah, we have your property. You may get it back. You may not, but here's the piece of paper saying we took it. And so now, now this guy went from managing to get this original thousand dollar fine that he was going to have issues paying, dropped down to a hundred dollars to then having all of his cooking equipment taken. So now he cannot perform the services that he normally does, including, you know, trying and all to make that a comes living. from a judge. Yeah. All that comes from a judge too. a judge saying, Hey, go over there and do this exactly to him. Send a clear message. That's all that is. Well, see, those, those, those would, officers, whoever involved, those guys are just yes men. They just do what see, they're told. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I was about to, I was about to kind of agree with you. And then I was remembering another conversation I was listening to the other day. And realistically, in a lot of situations, especially when it comes to like warrants and stuff like that, these days, most of the things the cops actually write up themselves and just hand to a judge and the judge just literally just signs it and hands it back to them. 
where the the way the system is actually you know if going by the way the system's supposed to work allegedly the judge the, the the cops are actually su- the cops are actually supposed to bring the judge the information the judge is then supposed to make the decision and write up the warrant himself so technically the way they actually do things now is actually unconstitutional but you know what else is new but yeah well I, they're not operating under color law anyways and they have no well, they are jurisdiction they, no, either, they, they, so. actually, they actually they, ha- they absolutely are op- operating under the color of law <laughs> they just decide well, not, whatever color yeah. they just they they just change the color but yeah they <laughs> I, but I get no, what you're saying <laughs> yeah but they um what should i call it like i said i i think more no, they're, they, they definitely aren't and and it is it is it all stems from our our legal system here in the united states has completely been subverted to not go constitution first and it like so many cases would be sl- slam shut cases right no question asked right even if there was a, a backward agenda to it you would run into this two plus two equals four scenario that would just shut it down and it just goes no we can make some weird law that says that that doesn't matter or we can do whatever we want because we worded it this way it so it's like What's happening here? Some people aren't standing up to enforce contract, which I mean, it's not a legal or a legitimate contract in my opinion, but still, if they're going to maintain this fraudulent idea, they need to at least pretend to, right? Well, yeah, but they That's why these kangaroo well, courts are pissing everybody off when they lock a somebody giving up free, you know, free food to the homeless or somebody starting up a lemonade stand or whatever. It's just ridiculous. It's like there are people getting raped and murdered and stuff. Like, don't you have better stuff to do legitimately? Well, no, because they go they go after stuff like this. The same reason they go after they they go after not necessarily drug dealers, but they love to go after drug users because those are the easy targets, and they can still make their quotas and still get people arrested and still get people put into the system and have them pay fines and stuff like that. So they go after the easy marks. They don't want to make things tough on themselves. So yeah, of course they're going to go after people like this. You know they have no they have no problem sending a SWAT style raid into somebody who they can be pretty sh- pretty safely uh, positive. Well, we need to set up to like stacked. GoFundMe for this. Well, there is a, there, time. Well, there is it. a there is a GoFundMe for for Chef Sanders. Thankfully, uh, it's up and running. I'm going to put it in the show notes. Uh, I believe actually, I think Shane Radliff actually had a hand in, in setting it up because he was one of the first people to to find out about the story. Shane's a good dude, man. Sh- Shane's a great dude, and it just it, it luckily this guy actually happens to be in the town that Shane currently lives in, so it kind of worked out. So he's trying to get the word out, and that's why I told him that uh, even though I wasn't able to hook up with Chef Sanders, so we could actually talk Just to him. Just what blows my mind is is these cops see this guy do this day in, day out for yeah. how God knows how long, right? That's the and thing. then one day they got a, they're told, "Hey, you're gonna need to go arrest this guy." I wonder how many of those cops put up our protest and say, "Hey, look, why the hell are we doing this? Like, this makes zero sense." Yeah, well, luckily, I don't think he actually ever got arrested. Luckily, he just got slapped with a fine. But it was, yeah, the 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 the, the cops. What happens sh- when he doesn't pay it, though? You know, well, like- oh, no, no, of course, the <laughs> eventually, yes, we know. But I'm, I'm talking about in the, in the immediate. But what you're saying, though, about you know, what why wouldn't these cops, you know, if any of them, do you think any of them actually said anything? Yeah, the ones who showed up for the raid, you would think maybe one of them would say, "Hey, wait a minute, this guy's been in our station every day for however long, feeding these people. Why are we doing this?" You're right. And now we're in his personal. We're in his literal pulling out his personal belongings out of, off of his private property off of for what yeah they they said Tra- giving freely giving his property away yep. that makes no sense to me the, well because he did I, I bet even that i bet that guy could bury this case just with city statutes that probably contradict the actions they took well it, it depends because unfortunately this yeah. was a measured hit yeah, but it's 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 what is it? It's the cottage laws, I think they're called. He unfortunately he probably is in violation of those ridiculous laws because his whole thing is you know, and he explains in the interview with Shane that he you know he went out back in 2010 and got a bunch of permits, including ones for sanitation that he thought would cover him for stuff like this. That he would you know, so he was so he was showing that he was actually getting the proper paperwork that he was trying to keep his stuff clean. Like he thought he did everything right, and of course as a as it always works, you know, ignorance of no is no excuse of the uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse for the citizen. It doesn't go the same for the enforcers. They can be ignorant of the laws all they want, but yeah. So he it, he actually tried to 
do the right thing by the by the state standards and just because he didn't follow fo- follow the rules exactly and he wasn't made made aware of it until they just all of a sudden said you need to stop now and then a couple of days later oh we're coming to take your stuff it wasn't like he was given a warning and said you you know you mu- you need to stop this and you need to go rectify it in this manner so but- he wasn't even given like a uh, yo if you show up and do this one more time, we're coming to take all your stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Even- no, he got he got slapped with the he got slapped with the fine. He managed to get the fine talked down, and then a couple days later, they came and took his stuff. And you know, he may get it back. That fine may- down. They needed that money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and again, because it's because he hasn't actually been charged with anything other than this this fine. Situation. I don't know when people are going to wake up to the. The state cannot police, and then their monopolized police turn into a literal racket, just like the mafia. And people don't, they're they're fleeced. They don't understand that this needs to go to the market, just like yo-yos, Netflix, and everything else. It makes no sense to have a socialist monopoly on policing. What do we want the police to do? Protect our property. Not enforce all these inane bullshit laws that make no one safer and no one's property more insured. Nothing happening there. Makes well, no sense to me. Well, it's not supposed to, I don't think. Because, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course they don't protect property. I mean, we have, we have tons of examples of that. I have my own example of that. They, didn't, they arrested me for attempting to protect my own property. <laughs> you know, but yeah. To this- be fair, you didn't just, you didn't get a bullhorn and yell at that lady to get off your property forever and ever and ever and ever until the batteries were dead on it and then called the police and then have them escort her off. I, I didn't follow the rules, just like poor Chef Sanders. Yeah, but yeah, I mean these things. These things, unfortunately, I mean th- this is one of the most egregious cases I've heard of. But these things do, unfortunately, happen all the time. And this goes, like you're saying, how how ridiculous it is. It it is because you would think any person with half a brain could look at any of these situations and not be able to find a single justification for it. I mean, even the most hardcore status, I. I Finding justifications for the type, this type of behavior must be really difficult because... I you mean, want me to tell you why most people don't like the cops and they don't even know why? It's because they didn't go down to the the, the protection agency, get to meet all the people that are they're going to be paying to protect them because that's what you would do if you're paying someone to protect you. And they're not getting to know these people on a name basis. And then when they see these people, it's always a negative thing. It's never, hey, we're here to make sure everything's okay and the property is 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 being protected. It's always, yo, we're here to enforce the state's edicts and laws arbitrarily. So it makes no sense at all why anyone would tolerate this after logically seeing it like after going okay this is what it is but they they don't there's no way you can go wow this is what we should keep doing day in and day out you know what i'm saying well yeah but that's the problem there isn't a lot of logic involved in that thinking most people just look at it and go oh this is the way it is or oh yeah this one thing maybe we should change this one thing but it's you know like i said this the, these are so egregious and this this one's horrible but there's that you know there's that one guy in florida i think is i think he's a pastor of some sorts who is constantly getting arrested for trying to feed the homeless i mean he he it happened like you know three yeah. times in the, in the he's like 90 years yeah, old as well 90 year old guy uh there's the there's other people in florida the so guys what who, kind of heart you have to have some kind of like devil in you <laughs> To like go arrest a ninety year old man who's feeding people who are starving, <laughs> like you have to just turn off the bra- what's ever in your brain. You just got to turn it off and go. Okay, I'm just gonna do, do, do. Well, I, I don't they, get it. Well, because because they well because they whatever to keep my paycheck. Well, because the 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 regulation writers and the enforcers both. Just can just they justify it with these bullshit claims of safety, which, like I said, even even the general public, it must be hard pressed to try to actually uh, agree with any of this stuff because it's the same thing. With the, the logic and, doesn't even follow well, again, about uh, again, safety, Jeremy. Again, well, again, Think it again, out, again, though. Okay, okay. Starvation okay. or possibly okay. getting sick. But Dave, hmm. again, again, you keep mentioning uh, logic. Mm. You, you keep mentioning logic. There's your problem, and this has nothing to do with logic. This is, <laughs> this is all. This is all about emotion for most people. And all jokes aside, I, it, is your soul worth a freaking paycheck? You know what I'm saying? It, apparently it is most people don't care but you know like i said there's there's the, the, these people are out there and it, it, you can talk about 
you know, we've argued before about the the traffic laws, and uh, I know we've tried to point out on this show and in plenty of other places that you know those are unnecessary and coercive, and that it's all about revenue. But you, I can see people trying yeah. to still make the arguments in, in as far as safety when it comes to that, because that's that again from the cops' point it's of view. A, hold on, hold on. That's yeah. that's the claim they make. Because even I mean, I had that experience myself where the cop tried to tell me that the reason I was getting a seatbelt ticket is because on the chance that I do get into an accident, I become a projectile, and then I could could actually possibly hurt somebody else. Therefore, I need to be punished for not wearing my seatbelt before any of that, which didn't happen, didn't happen. But it's the same type of justification. They 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 try to hide behind the safety thing and claim, well, well, you know, we're just trying to make sure it's they're they're safe. It's like, well, are you feeding these people otherwise? No. Are they going to be starving and possibly just like dying in the street otherwise? Very possibly. So why, like, as a mayor? The, the, what sounds better, 20 people starved in Baltimore or 20 homeless fed by charity? Well, exactly. And, <laughs> just, and, just fuck me up, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes and, no sense. But Well, and charity is a good word to use because this is actually a, a, a real, not a real world, real time example of what people claim can't be done. And that's why government must do it, which is how would people say how they, has he not went out? People say they can't. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, people say they can't. The reason there aren't private charities cause, is because they're not successful enough and the government has to take money and, and distribute it. <laughs> and of course, anybody who's actually looked at the numbers, and this has been done 16 ways from Sunday, including from people on both sides of the political spectrum, have actually looked at this and the honest ones have go, oh, yeah less than 15% of the money that's supposed to go to the quote unquote poor actually gets to the poor. The rest of it goes to the bureaucracy and the administrative bullshit. So they're, they're, they're completely ineffective, but they, but the, the claim is that these private charities weren't successful enough. Therefore the government had to step in when, when again, if you actually look at the history, it's no plenty of private charities were plenty successful. The government stepped in anyway, because they wanted the cut of, they wanted the cut of the action. They wanted the ones to be claiming that they were solving the problem. So they actually made it more difficult for, for companies to become, for organizations to become charities with all the bullshit 501 C three law, you know, the tax laws and all that crap. They actually made it more difficult and people like chef Sam, on this small scale or that other older guy in Florida or the one I was starting to mention before, the bigger outfit in Florida, Sean's Outpost, which they've been fighting legal battles for years. They actually now have a giant, I, I, don't, I don't remember how many acres it is, but in the Florida wetland, in the in the in the wetlands in Florida, they actually managed to finally secure a giant chunk of land where the homeless people are actually just allowed to stay. And, you know, they worked really hard for that, but they dealt with it for years. Again, a, 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 started by one guy and then a group of people literally just giving of themselves and then asking for other people to donate, not saying you have to donate, not going to not going to their house with a with a with a IRS agent behind them with a gun saying you must give this or we're going to lock you in a cage type of deal. And if you refuse the cage, we're going to shoot you like the government. What's that do. meme? Uh, what's that meme with a guy who's got a broken uh, the government breaks his leg and then gives him a wheelchair and yeah. says, see, we're helping. Yeah, exactly. That's the way government <laughs> operates. They break your legs and then sell you the wheelchair, wheelchair and claim that they've solved your problem. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I got to thinking earlier when I started, when we were talking about, uh, you know, we were going to talk about tonight and I, I had mentioned, I had mentioned to Shane that we were going to discuss the situation with Chef Sanders, you know, an another organization I know of the, uh, the don't comply guys down, down in Texas. Uh, they deal with this type of crap too. They're they're always out trying to feed the homeless, and they had to battle with the cops for a while too because they wanted to try to shut them down. And you know, again, the only justification they ever have is this vague claim of safety. When the choice is, it, it's the same thing as like places that have outlawed dumpster diving. And as well, here's my, as here's my hold, on, hold, hold on, just just let me finish. One go point. ahead, go ahead. Um, as disgusting as you may find. A, an activity such as dumpster diving, like if the, you, you if you're grossed out by that, fine, that's one thing. But if the choice is allowing people to do stuff like that, or allowing other people who to stop people for dumpster diving are actually making food and handing it out to them, like if, if the options are either one of those two things or the person starving, like why is this even a discussion? Well, it's either a blatant anti-vagrant, you know, measure that he's taken, but there are easier ways to do it than chopping some private citizens legs out from under him. 
Well, yeah, but in this in this particular situation, well, in this it's partic- a private. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just no, going to no, say, you. in this particular situation, it can't even be that because the police were allowing the homeless people to sleep in their station and allowing Chef Sanders to feed them. So Yeah. In wow. Other okay, so yeah, yeah, my theory blown out. Well, no, yeah. no. In general, I got what you were saying, but in this particular case, it my, can't my, even be that. <laughs> why are, so why don't these people go ahead, these, these people that want to help and feed the homeless, go ahead and create a puppet religion that gets uh, 501c3'd or whatever, and... Uh, or recognized by the state as an official religion that their only tenet is that we go out and feed the hungry and it I mean, first amendment right there you like they can't stop it oh uh, that's i mean that's actually a good idea and I'm, I'm sure there are ways like that around it unfortunately i mean i know the you if, if the guy's a christian he could he could get off on this on christian grounds easily it says feed the poor in the bible <laughs> I, I I'm I'm not sure of his religion. I don't recall him saying so. But you know, I like I said, I, I think that there's definitely ways you could get around this. Unfortunately, I think the difficulty in this particular situation for people like Chef Sanders, for example, who are already on a shoestring, like doing this on a shoestring budget to begin with, and now having been fined and you know, the, like a yeah. hundred dollars plus whatever the the undisclosed court cost costs are, and the fact that he's had his equipment taken away from him, even if he could get it back, uh, who knows how long that'll take? Who and knows? You know, his house ransacked too. I mean, they well, no, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. saying there's no telling what they did. Well, yeah, oh yeah, that was the other thing. I was was going to mention the other thing he said during the interview with Shane that he found really bizarre and like really like bugged him a lot was the fact that among all the other crap they did to him they also like tore apart like went behind his fireplace like he he actually said he felt like they were treating him like some large like drug dealer or something like they were searching everywhere for every like every little nook and cranny when clearly like all he had even been accused of doing was feeding the homeless uh, so yeah, they're trying to run him out of town for some well, reason. I don't know why. That's crazy. Yeah, I, well, you know, like I said, whatever the reason is, it just it sucks that he has to deal with this. But uh, getting back to you know having some ways around this, the, the problem with for people like in his situation is they don't have a lot of money to begin with, and just to jump through the legal hoops in order to get the the five hundred one c three or whatever classification you're going to get. They charge it. They charge you know stupid fees for all that stuff too, and that's usually hard for people to come up with. It's just another, you know, just like anything else, it's another government instituted barrier to entry to these type of to these type of organizations. So, I mean, I'll definitely pass that along to Shane and hopefully get a good message to Chef Sanders and see if that's. I mean, something- you know, you hear about the you know the pastor down in whatever Florida that gets arrested. Is he appealing on religious grounds on First Amendment grounds? You know, because. This is, I mean, like I said, this is easily wrapped into a religious uh, activity. I could, uh, and, and I could see that First Amendment grounds. You could appeal this all the way to the highest state court in that state and get it state uh, state law that they couldn't interrupt the feeding of homeless. Uh, easily, again, uh, an interesting point. Uh, unfortunately, though, usually, again, in these cases, unless somebody like the ACLU or somebody is getting involved, that's people, yeah, that's know, probably who you'd have to go. Through yeah, you would have like to try that, because because without Christian them, organization or something. Well, yeah, lobby. because without that type of backing, people like this, again, unfortunately, can't afford to take these things to the highest yeah. level. You know, that's the type oh, of no, situation. This, guy, this guy's not going to be able to beat this alone. So like like if you if you guys got five bucks to send to this guy, do it. <laughs> Yeah, like well, if if is if a cup of coffee, you know the, the if a cup of coffee is worth this starving child, you know, no, but uh, go go ahead and help this guy. He sounds like he's a a really genuine guy. Like he really wants to actually help people. I mean, whoever wakes up at you know the crack ass of dawn to to feed pe- total strangers it has to be somebody that you'd want in your community, wouldn't you? Yeah, right? you wouldn't want to try to run that person out, right? Like, I don't, it just doesn't make much sense to me. No, it doesn't. Well, and there does seem to be some support from the community itself, but of course they're going against the machine and the uh, the the governments in Illinois have not been known to be very, you know, fair to the people <laughs> largely. No. You know. I forgot that this was in Illinois. Yeah, it's, it's in <laughs> Illinois, unfortunately, but you know, he does seem to have oh, some support boy. and the Never go- mind, I just I understand all of it now. <laughs> The go the GoFundMe is up, and of course, like I said, I'm going to put that in the show links, the show notes, and uh, yes, just like you said, if anybody, you know, if you, if especially if you're people, if, if you're somebody who's always looking for an actual good cause to donate to, 
I can't think of much better one. You know, this guy, especially just, you know, listen to the interview. I'll put that in the show notes too. The, uh, the interview with, uh, with Shane Radliff that he did with, with uh, chef Sanders. It's only, it's only 13 minutes long. And, you know, he explains that, you know, he literally just started doing this because he really just wants to help. And he's, he even mentions the fact that he's, he's just trying to bring his community closer together. You know, he does mm -hmm. with the crop, with the problem with the cops and everything else like that. He doesn't want to, you know, he's trying, he, he's trying to do nonviolent things. He's trying to get these at See, risk. Youth you would think he would have been steer them away. Cops at least too, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a crazy situation and it's, it's unfortunate, but you know, like we were talking about, you see this happen way too often. This was just the one of, like I said, one of the most egregious ones because of the raid that actually took place on this poor guy's house, on this poor guy's place. I, I've seen people get. I've I've heard heard of organic farms getting raided bec just because of what the stuff yeah. they order, right? Uh, well, I've heard of that too, uh, and I've I've seen ones. On, I've seen I've seen raw dairy farms get raided, but again, those are you know bigger operations, and of course, I I think they're definitely egregious. I think they're horrible, and they're so like hyper mobilized and hyper like in attack mode right now for this drug war that like they treat everything like the drug war. It seems, and this is having deleterious effects on the nation in my opinion like people are not they don't trust the government or the police anymore like even average joes they have zero trust they just want that thing to leave them alone that's all they want leave me alone <laughs> yeah well like like we were talking about on last week's show i think I, I think the sentiment's starting to shift that way, but I still think that unfortunately far too many people will give the system as a whole, especially the law, law enforcement angle, uh, will, will still give them a pass. Like They'll wag their finger angrily at situations like this if they're made aware of these, which again, this is why we're doing this episode. I'm, I'm hoping to get this uh, even to, to even more well, ears. Just to me, it's the inefficiency of the whole thing. You, you, you can sit here and rail all you want about whatever you want about the police okay every angle every whatever angle you want to take but to me the the angle that just boils me up every day about it is the inefficiency of it all they cannot price their current business model because it is forced at the barrel of a gun so we have this artificial demand for a artificial market uh, an artificial price for an artificial market demand so we're in la la land right now it, we have to have some kind of semblance of reality here, and that's why people are losing a lot of faith in the system. And it would do this the current this current version of this nation state or whatever. It would behoove them, in my opinion, to do some kind of breaking up of the lower law functionings, in and let it go to in insurance company controls, because that's that's who would have the essentially private armies protecting everyone's property yeah well i mean that's a type of long-term goal thing that of course we we would like to see happen it's just convincing people to get there because <laughs> of uh, course the, 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 pro the problem that I, that i see and again i think i mentioned this last week too it's i i want to believe that people are getting not just getting fed up with the system, because I, I do agree. I see that. I see a lot more people getting angry. My, my fear, because again, where I live and the people I deal with and the, and the people that I interact with, the, 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 the most common reaction that I see, unfortunately, to that reaching that breaking point is not, is not is the next step is not action. The next step is apathy. And I'll, too Ugh. many, too many people finally hit that wall well, there is that it's well, a lot to get on your shoulders you know oh no no and i'm not i'm not i i understand it i went through it at a, for a certain point in my life as well i i totally get it but that's where unfortunately a lot of people seem to get <laughs> stuck the ones even the ones who get to that point you know like for instance all of the the bernie supporters you know the the ones who actually had somewhat of a brain who actually were like you know, before before the news came out that Bernie pretty much let that whole thing happen, who were actually like really disenfranchised, woke, with the being system. woke for a Democrat. You well, know, yeah, no, but, but the ones the ones who were the ones who were actually disenfranchised with that happening to him and going, oh my God, the, like no matter what we do, we really can't win. That's why I kept saying at the yeah. time those were the people to reach out to because if you don't, 
there's like there's a window for everybody, and especially like oh you know, yeah, talking dude. about I here was, in the states. Yeah, I was going hard on that. If you're thing. talking about the super delegate thing, but if you're yeah, but if you're talking about uh you know here in the states and stuff, whoever wins the election, the people on the other side are always it's always best to try to reach them right then because most of them will be pissed off, but every day that goes by after that, they become less piss pissed and more apathetic, and at a certain point. You know, for some people, it's three months. For some people, it's six months. For some people, it's a couple of years. They're finally like, oh, whatever. We just got to look forward to the next time. And they kind of forget about what they were actually trying to get changed in the first place. Now they're, they're refocused on just trying to change the person that's there, they, you know, in the presidency or whatever, or their senator or whatever they care about. But they're, they're, they're not caring as much about the issues. And that apathy starts to build, which is why I think, you know, that's why I kept saying you got to target these people now <laughs> because otherwise, a year from now, yeah, they may still be pissed, but they're gonna be they're not gonna be pissed for the same reasons anymore. They're gonna kind of forget. Yeah, the sting's not gonna still be there, yeah. So, you know, like like I said, I I'm, I know I'm all that, for changing um, I'm all for changing things to more of a method that you're talking about, but it's it's convincing people of such. And that's why I hope just at least putting stories like this out there, hopefully more people become aware of them. Because like I said, these are the ones that I would love for anybody to try to like give me an honest not 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 somebody who works for government but some other you know non-government statist actually try to honestly give me a justification for this that any of this is is uh, is not just necessary but actually right in any way shape form way shape or form because I saw some comments well, a status would tell you that they they're they're doing untaxed transactions Well no no that that that's the that one actual thing actual value is getting transferred well, no, the, the, well, and the, it is affecting the overall supply of those items well, see, in, in the any marketplace. Other, so, like, well, no, no, but that's it's a not even on tax, socialist though. market. Yeah. But, it's not, but it's not even on tax, though, because if he was trying to sell this food, then I could see them making that argument because one person actually did on the GoFundMe. Somebody actually, I guess somebody local uh, commented on there and said that even if he does get his stuff back, he's still going to have to pay his his permits and whatever, just like the rest of us, basically insinuating that they themselves were some kind of somebody in the food industry who actually went through that process. <laughs> you know, So yeah, there's going to be people like yeah. that. And if, if he was selling his food, then I could, then, then they, yeah. then I still don't agree with that argument, but then they could. I'm make, just telling make, you what like the, the no, no, Kim no, Jong-un statist would say. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but they, they can't even make that argument in this situation because he was giving it away for free. <laughs> yeah. he had no he wasn't selling this in any way shape form or fashion so taxation doesn't even enter into it the only thing he was busted on was something through the cottage the, the cottage laws or whatever they are that he doesn't have the right permits as far as like the clean like being being uh properly vetted that he's clean and sanitary and all that stuff you know as i mentioned earlier he went through back in mm -hmm. 2010 so eight years ago to get a bunch of different permits that he thought were covering him and nobody told him anything different since then. So he just kept kind of doing what he was doing because nobody was saying he was doing anything wrong and people, including kind the like police, the dog walking, <laughs> but well, well with, well, I, well, in my situation with dog walking, I, I got permission. I essentially got permission from the, the, from people who are actually in the town, uh, in the town bureaucracy, you know, they told me, well, there aren't laws for this. So just do this. Okay. This guy actually yeah. was in the police station on a regular basis, and <laughs> they failed to mention. At any it to point, him. they could have been like, "Stop, or we're going to arrest you, or we're going to fine you and take this shit from you." Like, <laughs> yeah, at any the, time. No, the the whole point to me is the no warning thing. Uh, if 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 this guy really is just going to buck up, bow his chest out, and, and keep doing this, here's the only other suggestion I could do: is he could sell plastic big plates or whatever you know like paper plates for a quarter and just with with every plate you know with every plate you buy you get food on it <laughs> yeah yeah so oh, like, again there's I, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna follow there's up gotta be this. no laws against selling you know well again plates. well well no again if he does stuff like that then he has to get even more permits and he has to file for even more things which he seems well, if his to be, GoFundMe is successful then well, boom, you get it done well yeah and he does seem willing to do these things he seems like somebody who i 
Shane was very careful with the way that he couched certain things as he was talking to him. He did. Shane can't help himself. He definitely tried to take shots at the at the state while he was talking to this guy. But he was very reserved compared to how Shane normally is because you could tell this guy. He's he's not an anarchist. He's probably not even a libertarian. He's just a guy who yeah saw a problem in his community. And because of the skills that he had, you know, the, the ability to cook and make good food, apparently everybody who everybody who's talked about him I've seen has, has said the guy, not only has he got a giant heart, you know, and is very kind and ridiculously generous with his time and money, uh, which he doesn't see, which he doesn't have much of, but he's ridiculously generous with it anyway. Uh, he also seems to make some pretty good food too. So, you know, here was this guy who fa- had some skills and said, I'm going to provide a service for my community. And I... I'm not going to actually ask for anything in return. I'm just going to do it for my community. And out of anybody who could possibly have to deal with the absolute bullshit of the state, this is the guy they focus on. Because like I mentioned earlier, low-hanging fruit, easy target. This is the type of person they can go after because if they can justify keeping the stuff they stole from him, then that go, that stuff all goes either the cops the cops usually get first crack at taking some of it and then the rest of it gets auctioned off and then that money goes back to the police department and now this guy has been robbed multiple times over because he was taxed in the first place you know he was extorted from in order to in order to pay yeah. for him being raided him being protected from him giving people yes. free property yes and you know he was just slapped upside the head every every it's, which it's way. these things that doesn't make sense about the socialist policing and i do stress the socialist policing because private policing would not be able to be behaving like this they would only be able to interact with you in the manners that you contractually uh, uh obligated them to well i think so we, we touched on that last last week or two weeks ago too it, it could they could but they wouldn't be able to get away for away with it for anywhere near they would get long. their asses sued into the dirt so no, they probably get shot. I mean, if you're talking about or, or, our shot, well, yeah, because if you're if you're yeah. talking about if you're talking about the type of society that we've talked about in the past, then I know you know the you know if, if you're talking about like a private community with say multiple competing uh, security forces within within inside of it, one of them starts doing Who's that. Who's got the best product for the lowest price? Yeah, but 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 just in in that setting, more likely than not, you're talking about a you're talking about a a contained system based upon property rights, the non-aggression principle, all that type of stuff. If one of these organization starts doing around going around doing this stuff and acting like the police do right now well they've just violated property rights and they're not and they're and they're aggressing against people so they're in violation of the nap so they've opened themselves up to a can of whoop ass being opened on them so like i said it wouldn't it wouldn't even or, have to it most or just even being the tied up swing. in arbitration to reclaim face you know because otherwise people would be calling them a state they'd be like hey you're literally trying to enforce your will here well yes they definitely would be doing that so <sighs> yeah, I, I think this is unfortunate. The road that we're going down, where there is this blind follower uh, ship from the enforcement class at this at this point in the game, where there is this much of uh, intelligence you can have about the world around you in the palm of your hand, and it just blows my mind how all of those guys didn't go, "Hey, look, man, I you know what was the guy's name? Uh, I can't remember. It was a, an Chef, odd Chef, name." Sh- uh- Chef Sanders, Kamal. I, th- I think it's, Kam- it's, uh, no, it's, it's Kamal. It's, it's, it's spelled a little differently, but I'm pretty sure it's Kamal. Yeah, yeah, Kamal Sanders. Yeah. So uh, they could have all been like, hey, we know Kamal. We're not doing this to him. He's a good guy. Uh, what the heck is this really about? And stopped it right there. Seriously. Yep. Uh, the police are no different than foot soldiers. And if the foot soldiers won't fight, then the, that guy's not a general. That guy's not a corporal. <laughs> They're just wearing funny suits. Well, exactly. And that's why when you started to talk about, you know, the judge passing this down originally and the, and they, oh, the cops just going, oh, we were told to do this. I, I don't, I, I'll never accept that argument for a second. E- even though, like I said, in most of these situations, I think the cops are the ones who actually write up the warrants. Although in this case, if, if as we mentioned earlier, the more likely scenario that somebody just snitched on him just because they wanted to be an asshole, then those t- people may have had somebody on the inside who would be willing to write, write the I'd warrant. I'd still up. love to know who it was what was the catalyst for that that without a warning you know that's what blows my mind yeah it that's definitely, what, if, I, if i was that guy 
If I was Chef Sanders, I would be going down to ask the judge what was why was the why what was the reason for this? Why was I able to go for this long and then boom, for some reason I'll all of a sudden, you know, a SWAT style raid to stop me from cooking food. Yeah. What what's I, going on? What's going on in my city, judge? I'd love to know. Yeah. As a concerned citizen who pays property tax here, you know, and and writes your check. Well, and it blows my mind. Well, mine too. But like I said, it, he he seems like the type of guy who would actually try to have that conversation because I don't think he's I don't think he's against the government necessarily. I think he's just against what the government's doing to him and people like him. But I think he'd be you know try he would definitely want to get answers. So that's why I'm going to follow up with Shane and and hopefully the uh, the GoFundMe would be successful and this guy because I know he was also looking for if anybody ha- was in close by would be had some type of you know area they or you know a place that they could that they're not using or something that they could actually let him use and rent out really cheap so he could at least continue cooking uh, while he's dealing mm-hmm. you know with what he's got left because he's still he is going to keep trying to do this and I, I applaud him for that he wants to keep trying to, despite what's happened to him he's not giving up. So in uh, that if he res- feels down in his core that he needs to do this, then he's going to do it, you know? Yeah. And of, of all th- of all things that you could fight the state on and say, F you, I'm going to keep doing this, just like that 90-plus-year-old guy, guy in Florida who keeps getting arrested for this and saying the whole time that he's not, you know, he doesn't blame. Like, I think I think I remember an interview with that guy with him saying you know he, he doesn't actually blame the cop. Well, hold on. I, I think I think the guy in Florida, I think I, I think I remember. I may be wrong. But an interview with him saying he doesn't actually blame the cops. They're just doing his job. But he's not going to stop because he what he he believes what he's doing is right so you know i think i think chef sanders is kind of the same way he's he's not holding it again like he's mad about the raid but he's more mad at the government as a whole i don't think he i don't know if he's holding it against people individually and i don't think he would if they would just give him his stuff back and let him go on his merry way he seems like the guy who he seems like the type of guy who would totally let it go and then turn around like the next day and ask if there was anything else he could do to help them <laughs> you know <laughs> like even after yeah. they did all that, like he totally seems like that guy just listen it's, to him talk. what's gonna what it's gonna take is a constitutional re- response team essentially constant like my constitutional rights are being broken right now shattered and thrown to the wind i need help if that guy could press a button and 15 20 people with weapons could come and run pr- protection detail against any kind of person that would be there to stop them I I don't think that they would be getting stopped as much. I think much more peaceful well, steps would be taken. Yeah, that's actually and and that's actually a good you know you want to do that. I mean, unfortunately, private defense outfits are uh, you know we mentioned I mentioned barriers to entry earlier. Uh, there's definitely a whole hell of barriers to entry to actually. Well, do then we have we have tools like cell four one one. Well, that's what I was going to say. Also, that's, what, that's, what I was gonna, you know, that's actually what, exactly what I was going to say. In the meantime, you could just use cell four one one and actually have people show up. And take care of you and protect you. But again, in this particular situation, this guy was caught so off guard. He literally left his house for like, I think, I I don't think he said exactly, but just based on the time frame of everything, it seemed like less than an hour that he left his house to go drop the food off for his sister, go pick up, go pick up his uh, helper and then come back. And by the time he got there, the van was already backed up to his front door and there was already people in SWAT gear in his house pulling stuff apart and like when he, he said when he walked in the door they were art they were actually in his refrigerator taking the food out of his refrigerator <laughs> you know that's ridiculous it's, no it completely is that insane. should be na- that should be nationwide news well, that they luckily, SWAT rated luckily so- this one has according according to what shane wrote up on this he that it actually did make worldwide news i don't know how big of a splash it made but apparently it did travel outside because the, the only US. thing that stops this is when the mayor goes down to the police chiefs and says i want to know why the hell this happened and i want to know why I shouldn't fire you right now well, for making that, all this bad PR? Well, yeah, happen. I was gonna say the only reason that happens is if enough people flood the mayor's office. So yeah, as, as exactly. Much as- so everyone, we need to find that neighbor na- uh, mayor's number, and you need to put it in the show notes. And everybody that's got a sack of uh, balls, call that mayor and say, I don't know what kind of show you're running out there, but arresting people for giving out free food is an absolute joke, and you're a joke of a mayor for allowing someone to do this. I think that's a great call to action, and. Uh- Again, I'm going to pass that along to Shane too, because I know, 
I know he's really invested in this one because again, it's you know, it's it's somebody local to him, and he's always concerned about these type of stories. Anyway, he's those, those he's probably a Democrat that mayor, and he, he's probably a cuck, and he will fold to the pressure. So just do it. Just call, all you got to do is f- call and say, "Hey, look, this is ridiculous." Yeah, that's okay. it. For, 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 Especially if you know people that live in Illinois, you could call them and tell them to call this mayor. That'll really help. Hey, I live in Illinois. You know, this is ridiculous. We don't do this to our own. Release the cookware. That's, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, like I said, l- luckily, Chef Sanders himself is not locked in a cage, which, you know, that could have happened through this whole process, too. That's 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 the one saving grace. But yeah. what? Well, OK, that's the first time, right? He said he's got no intention of stopping. So this is no. only going to escalate. Yeah, he's he's definitely going to push it. But I, you know, hopefully more so people. I'm will. escalating my rhetoric here because this is getting escalated. So I understand that what's going to happen is, is he's going to he's this is going to happen again. They're going to go after him again. And if if you guys go at this mayor hard, if we have thousand people, two thousand, three thousand people call. <laughs> This this won't happen to this guy again. Life goes on instead of yeah no, further uh, escalation for no reason. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I, I think I think it is a good call to action, and uh, th- this is this is one of those situations. I will actually place a phone call. I'll, I'll definitely try to dig up the information and, and, and put it in the show notes. And uh, I, I don't I don't call politicians or anything like that anymore. But for this one, I think I'll make an exception because I was actually just call and say I'm a. Per- friend of chef sanders that's all you got to say oh no i know and i i but i i think, I, I was, I think this is ridiculous yeah <laughs> I, I was just i was honestly that moved by li- listening to the guy talk because you could just hear like he he's just the poor poor guy is so bewildered he's just like i i don't understand like you know like any normal person i don't understand i know i, I want you guys help. calling my mayor that's all i'm saying <laughs> Well, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we could. Get, I'm sure we could list reasons for everybody to call everybody's mayor. But let's uh, let, let's focus the let's focus our energies on this one. If anybody's going to do anything, if you know. Well, this guy's clearly trying to help people, right? And why wouldn't you also help people by helping him? Because you're by extension helping a bona fide person that wants to help other people. You know, this guy's not a fake or a phony at all. Oh, of course. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, these this is one of so, those. So I mean, it's a solid bet, you know. Yeah, and we're you're you're talking. You know, we largely talk to people who think somewhat along the same lines we do, and who share a somewhat similar vision of a free society based on those private charities that we were mentioning earlier. Well, here is a wonderful opportunity to put your money where your mouth is. You know, look, it's it's beside the point that most there would be most likely no way a vagrant or a homeless person would be allowed into a private city, but. We don't currently have that situation occurring. What we do have is a guy trying to help his fellow man in a situation where the reality is the state's got situations where they're trying to stop him. And that's it. I could totally see. So we've got to help this guy, in my opinion. I could totally see private cities run by hippie-ish people who would have places (laughs) for the homeless to hang out. You know, kind of like the same type of thing with the drug addicts like we were talking, like I was talking about uh, on my recent I think I was talking about either on the recent abolitionist abstractions I did with John Vibes or one of the freedom fiends I did with him recently. The whole idea about, you know, how do you, how do you combat the drug problem by actually setting up places where people can go do them safely and actually give out clean equipment so you don't have to worry about people dying in the streets. They're actually using better stuff. Uh, you let the market decide. That's well, no. how you freaking do it. It's well, so course. simple. But no, but like I'm saying, you, <laughs> I, I, I know in your type of city, you wouldn't have homeless or, or these uh, clean, these clean these clean uh, well, i mean it, that wouldn't be nice mine, to let someone sit out be. and starve my, my that would be my, charity my, housing my, my obviously would. but i'm more of a hedonist so you know whatever anyway <laughs> <laughs> well ch- charity housing would have to exist in, in almost every area I mean, there's no way that there's not going to be a 100 percent homed rate in every location people houses burn down people make bad decisions consecutively uh, it, you know and there's nothing really it's wrong not with living beyond by, me to all and yeah i was just gonna say there's, there's not necessarily anything wrong with living by living in a van down by the river if you so choose so <laughs> as long as you're not on somebody's property then what do you do you're exactly. homesteading <laughs> they can fuck off 
Well, no, because you were you were saying you know houses burned down and stuff. I was like, yeah. Well, if you got a little plot of land down by a river, yeah, just go park a van. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but what kind of shit community isn't helping someone that their house burned down? But anyways, look, the problem is, is is the community. If the I guarantee, if that whole city knew what was going on at a visceral level with their mayor and how they're doing stuff, and that their house could just get ransacked for no reason, no warning at all, they would change their attitudes about how they're viewing this. Well, yeah. Well, and that, that again is why we're trying to help this thing go viral and hopefully more people will become aware of it and more people, because since this is one of those situations, that's really hard to find any justification for, as we were mentioning before, even the normal one about, oh, he's skirting taxation. I can really only find cronyism in this, is one the either. answer. Uh, you know, there, there really, there really is no justification other than some bullshit one the state would make up that even, even I can only think of cronyism. That's it. That's the only answer to me. Well, no, I, again, Someone, we, I, no, again, we, I'm not talking about why it happened. I'm talking about the perception for the average individual. No. Like this is one of those situations yeah. because normal in most situations, it's very easy for the average status to go, oh, well, they should have just followed the law. It becomes a lot harder in these situations, especially because how it took place and how how horrible of a situation this guy was subjected to. It wasn't just that <laughs> it's he like, stopped. Oh, he followed the law. It, yeah, it oh, he was doing it in the police station for years. Yeah. Oh, they did it without warning. Yeah. Like when, when you start exactly. stacking up all this stuff, exactly. it's like, what the f- yeah, exactly. Like, what was going on here? It, well, exactly. That's what. That's why this one, I think, is so much more clear cut for people to see. You know, as bad as it is, unfortunately- it takes just like with the pol police brutality stuff it happens every day, but it takes yeah. the super egregious ones like Kelly Thomas, you know, like yeah. the, like the shooting of Philando Castile, like the ones that are so clear cut that it becomes ridiculously just, hard, even oops. for the most hardened <laughs> status to go, uh, well, of course they should have just followed the law. It's like, well, no, these people did follow everything about the law and they still ended up either their ass whooped or dead in those situations, you know? So look, it, it no one's sitting here saying that the police shouldn't fuck some people up. They should, but if you're following the law, they technically shouldn't even see you or you shouldn't exist to them. Well, and it's these but, situations but, where, but it, but it would get in. He wasn't following the law. That's the problem. The law. Yeah. Nobody nobody can know if they're. I following thought he had the all the permits. Well, no, he yeah. thought he had the, the right permits. He did. He apparently he was. The law missing. is what that judge says. The, well, yeah, but the the whatever the I think it's called the cottage law, cottage laws or whatever they are. He was missing the the correct one to do what he was actually doing. And again, we've you know we've that been this that a involves times. what some town clerk calling him and saying, Hey, you need to come file this permit down here and pay this, uh, or you can't do your thing next Wednesday. Uh, oh, okay, ma'am. I'll be down there and do, well, to not, do that. They're, they're, they're not, <laughs> they're not in the business of calling. We'll get a thousand dollars. If we find him though, <laughs> they're, 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 they're not in the business of calling you, Dave. Heck I, I mean, you, you talk about stuff like that. I just found, I mean, I knew this anyway, but I was reminded of it recently because I'm trying to sell my house. I have to go to the town, to the to the town hall, and or or the records department, wherever the hell it is, and check with the permit office because I'm pretty sure there's certain permits I don't have for my house because my mom, who his name has been on the deed since the beginning, because she was looking for something to gain, uh, what you call it. She, she didn't own anything at the time, so she wanted to have some type of property, and I also didn't have the credit history, so I let her be on the deed with me, and she claimed that she was going to take care of these things, and it wasn't until only recently that I was made aware that she probably didn't take care of those things, and now I have to scramble to do it, so I called up and said, okay, yeah. listen, and again, you know, gritting my teeth, but I called up and... I, I'm willing to do what I need to do to correct this. What do I need to do? Oh, you just need to come down and check with this department and they'll let you know what you have and what you need. And then you could pay the fee, uh, you know, whatever it is. I'm like, okay, I have to pay a fee to be able to get information about my own house. Yeah. In order, <laughs> in order to pay you even more money to get the proper permits. For my, like, and some so, government dicks went, yeah, uh, let's just talk them five dollars a form, you know. Oh, it's, it, it, oh, it's, and it's, it, it's, oh, it's no. totally not even realistic. Oh, 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 no. See, they're 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 nice enough. Oh, no, 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 per form here. It's 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 a flat fee of twenty five bucks. 
<laughs> which is just <laughs> is so it's again for some people that may be chump change not chump change for me but just the, it's the principle well, that, that i not, have to pay it's not even that right we all know me and you as people who understand economics that that's not the market price for that it's just an arbitrary number made up to by them. Exactly, it makes no sense. Well, it, it, it twenty five dollars for what? What? What did I just pay twenty five dollars for? So this clerk's to get paid later. No. What's going on well, here? Well, exactly, you pay twenty five dollars so the so the clerks can do their job that they're already getting everything paid that for. a computer a, a, a Dell computer from ninety eight could do. Keep but going. Even, but no, but but e, 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 even if you allow the fact that the clerk actually has to do some physical work, like just just allow them that. <sighs> you have to pay so that the clerk can do work that they're already getting paid for for money that's already being extorted from you, but you have to pay an additional fee. And usually the only justification for that is their exorbitant budgets. So they have to come up with more revenue to cover all the bullshit so they can give people more money for not doing anything. <sighs> the easiest way to do that is to tack on a fee. Like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. That, that's like the that's like the most that's like the most insane stuff they've started doing. And 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 I only remember them starting doing this about ten years ago. But with like the with the court stuff, you know, I started noticing it in traffic court, and then they extended it over to the criminal courts as well too. They on top of like the fines. And court fees that they may and they may uh, charge you with or whatever. They've also tacked on to ev like in the traffic court every single ticket. They've tacked on an additional, you know, automatic surcharge for everything that is another thirty to fifty. I think some of them are fifty five dollars. Just on top of everything else, just an another surcharge. No real explanation other than you know to cover these blah 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 fees, which again, oh, you're yeah. actually and being extorted poor, to pay for in the first luck. place. No, no. If you're if you're like somebody that's on welfare or uh, government housing or whatever, and you get popped for one of these things, and you really you don't even have a pot to piss in, and you're like, oh, you owe ninety dollars to the court. It's like for what? Like, I don't, why? Well, if you don't pay it, there's going to be a warrant out for your arrest. Uh, exactly. <laughs> That's you know, <laughs> and then and then you're you're you get a warrant, you get arrested. There's a arrest record uh, uh, on your record. Anytime you go apply for a job, they do a background. You're gonna have an arrest on your record. It's oh, you're not getting hired. So that eighty dollar fine makes you unhirable. It's a joke. Like it's <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah, well, that's government for you. And they wonder why people are trapped in systems. You know, well, they wonder. I, I, it's because I, I this is, the whole system is set up. I was going to say, I don't know who wonders because it seems like, you know, that that's by design. So I think the people that are doing it are, are quite sh are quite aware of why people are in those are trapped. Um, most people don't realize they are trapped. See, I don't know why pool pooling of welfare checks hasn't happened because you know how much shit you could get done. Anyways, uh, that's that's a topic for another day. All right. On that note, I think we should get wrapping up. Uh, <laughs> I know we said we were going to keep this short, but you and I both ended up ranting a bunch. So we would <laughs> we I think we ended up doing close to an hour anyway. But anyway, well, it's just such a it just pisses you off so bad. Yeah, it's, <laughs> to it's, hear this, it's messed up. So again, everybody, all the stuff will be in the show notes. But please, please, please consider uh, donating to uh, Chef Sanders GoFundMe. And if I can manage to get all the rest of the information and get it up there on the show notes before the show comes out on Sunday night, then I will have that there too. And also, please consider you know the calling or whatever else we try to set up. If you're somebody who likes to take action and would like to help or like likes to help or, or at least talks about trying to help other people anyway, here's an opportunity to not only help this guy, but as Dave mentioned, help the people that he's trying to help in the first place. Uh, you know, so it's Yeah, it's a, a trickle down effect. Exactly. So this is this is one of those things, you know, I, I rag on a lot of ANCAPs a lot of time for being horrible capitalists. You know, overall, I can rag on a lot of voluntarists and, and, and anarchists of different stripes who claim, uh, you know, who talk about private charities and stuff. But when the opportunity presents itself now, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're nowhere to be yeah, found. Yeah, and it takes you five seconds to dial star six, seven and that, that mayor's number when we put it in the thing, you know? Hell yeah. All right. Well, on that note, again, we're going to get closing out. So please, uh, please check the show notes and uh, consider helping out Chef Sanders. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And subscribe to our page. <laughs> yes, this this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Hopefully, Andre will return next week, and we will return to having guests again. 
And as Dave mentioned, yes, Patreon, please consider subscribing. We, we have been cranking out an episode a week now, and uh, things are looking good. We, we picked up a couple patrons over the past uh, month or so, so we appreciate that. And, you know, yeah. only a dollar a month. There's, uh, there's, there's at least, there's at least 20 some, I think 22 episodes on there now. Yeah. Some guys are out there wanting 12, eight, you know, we're just wanting $1. Yeah. We don't, know, we month. don't have the, we don't have the tier system, like some backward Hicks barbers down in Alabama. Uh, we don't do the tier system like they do. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> uh, look. Hey, you leave them alone. They're nice boys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just just a dollar a month. But I've, you know, I don't think e- either one of us. I mean, we've always said it'd be nice to make money all this, but both of us have always just just wanted people to fuck it, just listen and go out and say, guys, there's something messed up, and here's why. You know. Exactly, and you know, say, same thing. You know, along with our Patreon, uh, if you are on Steam, it please go check us out there and considering upvoting and re-steaming our stuff. We are putting all of our content and you know for the same reason we're not i mean yeah the little bit of money we get i I mentioned this to somebody because uh who was it uh i think it's graham smith yeah he's the guy who does voluntary japan right yeah uh he had actually met he had actually stumbled upon our our dsol uh steam it and was asking because i guess Mm -hmm. i guess he stopped paying attention for a while he didn't realize danilo had gone and he was asking questions about uh, older episodes like he saw an episode up and he was confused and i'm like no no this is from a couple of years ago we're still and then somebody, somebody else was yeah. somebody else on our uh, the SOL Facebook page was asking, you know, about Steam it and why we were there because they were explaining the difficulties they had trying to sign up originally and thinking it was kind of like not worth it, you know. And I said to them, mm-hmm. that, you know, honestly, it's not even about the money because like the couple of bucks we get per per episode are nice, but it is more than we were getting on any other platform, which we were going to put it up for free anyway. Number one and number yeah. two, and mo- more importantly. The whole reason I'm shifting all of our stuff over there to DTube and to D Sound is so it can be somewhere. Is this there forever? Yeah, so we don't ever have to worry about being DCMA'd from. Uh, that's what it is, right? Yeah, yeah you can't lot, shut this off. We're we're in the ethos forever. Yeah, you don't. We don't have to worry about our stuff getting taken off of Facebook. That's what really why we're doing it. You know, like I said, the, the extra little bit well, of money think, is nice. Well, you think, you know, they they, sh- they could shut us off of YouTube in two seconds, and then there goes everything, and then I'm sure they could pull some strings at, at Libsyn and get us shut off there, and no one would be able to hear our stuff. So we have a situation where two, well, two parts could be pulled, and we could be turned off. I mean, I, I, I know we don't say shit anywhere near related to the Cantwell, but it happened to Cantwell. It's happening to a couple other people. It could easily happen to us. Why so, do people get shut down? It, it, you don't even have to. You don't even have to be as extreme as you know Campbell yeah. or anybody else. It, ha- it it can just be some topic you're talking about that triggers somebody mm-hmm. else, and they just you know even Touches if it's not a a, even if it's not a systematic campaign like it can be for some of the bigger names. It could just be some random thing where somebody gets a bug up their ass and they just decide to make mm-hmm. a make a make an example out of you. And as you can see, you know I, I don't want to get I don't want to get into too much because we'll end up talking for a whole another hour or so but like with the, <laughs> with the recent shooting that just happened you know there was a picture being floated around uh, c- claiming to be the shooter it was poor marcel fontaine from uh I know, I fuck- <laughs> but that, that's messed up man. i was like but i looked at i saw that picture and just for two seconds i saw that picture and i was like that's fontaine it was <laughs> that's that- and, and yes, a lot of people thought it was funny, but like stuff like that's messed up. And that's how that guy's such funny. a troll. Like he's but, not, that's no, not, not even that troll. guy. That guy's, he's, he's not a troll. Fontaine he, is. No, dude, Mar- Marcel's autistic. <laughs> he's still a fucking troll. No, that's why, no, that's why he acts the way he acts. And that's why he jumped from being a libertarian to an ANCAP to an ANCOM, like, and made these drastic switches that nobody really seems to understand. If you actually know yeah, him, because I have friends, I have friends who he stay, he lived at their place up in New <laughs> he Hampshire. He blocked me. Like they know, they know him. He will literally just, he, because of his autism, he is, he's not like, you know, he's not like an Asperger Terrian like me or Lisa uh, Delasho or some of us who are admittedly so. He's like, actually on the higher up on the autism scale he just adapts yeah. to whatever's around him to fit in and when he started oh. dating he is gay you know openly and admittedly when he started dating a new guy who was a communist it was like a light switch he was just changed he's not a, he's not an adherent to any you know, that's why he ended up voting for for oh. but anyway i didn't want to get bogged down in this but the whole point of it was that's how you get somebody killed well i remember him in a few groups back in the day he eventually blocked me 
I guess Gary. when he went and commie. Yeah, well, I, I, like so. I said, I've also met the guy. Danilo and I met him in the, in uh, one of the uh, anarchy in New York City's a couple of years ago. But anyway, that like I said, that wasn't oh. the whole point. I don't want to get hugged now. The whole that wasn't the point. The point is that's how you get people killed <laughs> by doing this uh, doing this boycotting stuff without actually getting the information first. You know, so that yeah, that it can be dangerous. You know, some people think if you just you know somebody. That's what I really didn't want to talk. I I, I refuse to talk about it tonight. I wanted to, but then when, I, when we got to, started talking on the show, I was like, you know what? I don't know enough. So exactly. So, all right. Before we get before we dig ourselves any deeper, let's close this off once again. Thank you everybody for listening, and we will catch you next week. Peace. With peace in the Middle East. Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store. Or go to getcell411.com. That's getcell411.com.